Hey everyone, it's Talison, and you can't see me because today we're going to do a digital uh, art video. This will be my first attempt doing one of these. Now I'm working on the fourth strip for the Meteorette. Let's see, we got Megan right here. And um, I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of my process when I'm doing this. Um, the fourth strip is almost done. I'm coloring it now. It will not be out until the scheduled every other Saturday. So not this week, but next week. The reason for that is I'd rather get ahead and have them in the can and ready to release than say, oh, it's done, I'm just gonna release it. Um, I have some medical stuff going on next week. I know I'm not gonna be able to draw, so there wouldn't be a strip next week if I did that. So we're gonna do it this way. Now, you can see, excuse my chair, uh, you can see that we've already got the color flats laid in for Megan. So we've got, you know, her hair and her eyes. and all of her costume and everything. I also did a gradient in the background and threw in some Kirby dots, some nice Kirby crackle. I haven't decided if I'm going to um, keep that or not. Let me just make a, make sort of a highlighter here. <clears throat> uh, because as you can see in some of these areas, it doesn't, put the whole dot down, which is just the nature of the brush that I'm using. Um, so let's get rid of that. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna leave that in. The nice thing about doing all this is that's something I can easily pick and remove if the uh, if that's something I wanna do. Um, so going to Megan here, she's all done. Oh, no, she's not all done. We need to pick her costume color and do her eye makeup. Oh, okay, so the worst thing about drawing digitally is forgetting if you're on the right layer or not. But look at that, I was on the right layer. Now the third strip, the Meet the Shusters, I did this, I colored this way, kind of. I've, I'm trying different technique with uh, with this strip, but I did color it digitally in Procreate. Um, it looked kind of better than this because of the fact that I imported it at such a high resolution. However, doing that limited me to two layers and I need more layers than that. There's just no way around it. Um, so we're doing it at a smaller resolution so that we can uh, use all the layers and you'll see why in a minute. Excuse me, I have to cough. <coughs> Man, of course I start recording and that that comes in. Um, the the sort of the point with the resolution is you can see where we get a lot of this artifact stuff along the lines uh, because it's a smaller resolution, it's a more pixelated line. I hope that uh, by adding a background layer of black, we get rid of that. Um, but we're gonna see when it's all done if that's something I need to fix or not. All right, now, going back down here, and I'm gonna try not to show you any of the other panels because I don't wanna give away any of the dialogue. Um, Okay, make sure I got the right brush and everything else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a layer. Oh, we've already got a layer started and we're doing shades. Now, this layer is at, well, we'll show you what it's doing. First of all, we're gonna use just black. So so this is a layer at just black. And I want to put some shadow underneath her chin here. And her ear. And a little bit along her hair here. A 
gosh. Now that's just an example. Now you're saying that's all black. Do we want it all black? Well no we don't. We want it to be a shaded color of the color that we've picked. So what we do is on this layer we make the opacity. I found 10% works pretty well. Oh there's a the clock. But um, it's going to depend on the colors you're using. But we go to 10%. And as you can see, it is now a shaded color. And this is going to work regardless of where we go. So we're going to put some shading here on our cape. Yeah, I really don't like this pixelated look, but in all reality, what we're looking at right now is greatly blown up from how it's gonna look when you actually see the finished artwork. So hopefully we're okay. Ooh, don't wanna give it all away. Uh, so now the nice thing about this is, let's go, oh, I'm gonna turn that black back on. Let's go down to one of her uh, unmentionables here, and, and say I want a shade line along the whole curve here. So we're gonna go like that, and you see that it, it's gonna cross over to the yellow, and it's going to it's gonna shade both, and we don't have to pick a different color. Now the first strip that I colored this way, the uh, Meet the Shusters, the number three, um, I didn't do this. I picked a darker shade of red and went in and colored all the red areas. I picked a darker shade of yellow and went in and colored all the yellow areas. This is much easier and I think it gives you a better result because of the fact that you can you can lap over like that. Um, if you want a, sh a shadow that falls on multiple, multiple colors, you don't have to draw the one and then going with the other color and then try to match it up. It, it just it works easier this way. I also feel like at this lower resolution that the color is not getting quite 100% on the line. But again, I think that's something you're only going to notice up close and as close as I'm working with it right now. Now if I wanted to like say only work with the cape and I didn't want the shadow overlapping, I could do that and what that's gonna do is that's gonna put a uh, mask on it. So if I do that, it only affects so it's only gonna affect the area of Okay, now the shadow came out a little too heavy there, a little more than I want, so all I do is go to the eraser, and I'm essentially just erasing black line. I remember, this is all black underneath. Uh, it's just that we turn the opacity down. So all I do at this point is I switch back and forth between, between my brush, which I use a custom inking pen that I found online and my uh, my eraser to get rid of any shades that I don't want. And 
nice thing about working digitally like that is I made that shadow too steep and I just hit the undo button. Can't do that on a sketch pad. You can't do that when you're working with real ink. See, I think I came over onto the cape a little bit there. Oh, no, I didn't. Um, something I'm trying on this one is for the whites of her costume. It's a slightly off-white tinge of blue that I'm using. Um, I'm hoping that makes the shadow look a little more blue-gray. See, I could do the mask again because we're just working with the hair. I've decided on this flat, uh, sort of animated shading style. Um, I've actually been playing with the paint brushes to do more, uh, to do more realistic shading. Um, and you're starting to see that in the backgrounds and stuff that I'm doing. But for the actual characters themselves, we're just doing this flat shaded, cell shaded style. Um, I, I quite like it. Um, pick that again. Now the hardest thing about this has been, for me, has been learning how to draw with a stylus. And you might say, well, it's the same as drawing with a pencil. And, well, it is and it isn't. Um, for one, I really like the tactile feel of the pencil dragging along the paper, which is something that you don't get when you're using a stylus. The other thing is that you've got... Um... Okay, so I... Usually, since I'm doing this with the stylus in the, in the iPad, I, have to, I do this in bed a lot, or I'll do it when I'm sitting and watching TV or whatever. So I'm holding the iPad in front of me with one hand, and I'm drawing on it with the uh, pen, which I've got like extended out. And I'm totally motioning this like you can see me, but you can't. Um, but what I've noticed is a lot of people that do this online, they actually lay the iPad down and they sketch on it like a sketchbook, which means their hand is dragging across the screen. That makes it feel more like... Uh, more like actual drawing, and that's what I'm doing right now, and I actually qu quite like it, but uh, I hadn't been doing that, silly enough, so we're going to have to see if this helps. Okay, we're going to give her some shade now. I use the same red for her eye makeup and her lipstick as I do for her costume. That is because I'm gonna go over and shade it so it should darken out. Um, but also because it's sort of the design that I did way back when, she is specifically picking that red. Um, you'll see as we get further into the strip that this is a trend that uh, Supergirls have in my universe is that they wear their primary costume color as their lipstick and eye color. It's like sort of like a fashion uh, trend at the time of um, of the comic. Oh, we're gonna do a nice little. And 
And the nice thing about this is you can't do it wrong because you just fix it up. Oh, I dipped into there. Okay, so let's do a little bit of shadow there. She's relatively small. She's probably a uh, like a 32C. Um, so not a lot of cleavage unless she's leaning forward or something like that. This is what I was talking about. Watch this. We're going to go the red of her sleeve, the white of the cuff, and her arm. One stroke, and we got all that. And see, the nice thing is if I don't want to go into the background, I can do that selection thing I showed you, but I can select multiple areas, and I can still get that technique that I just showed you. Now, see, I make more accidental lines like that that look good. I, I'm really trying to learn that the, uh, that the stylus will react like a pen, react like a brush, and... depending on how much pressure you put on it. If any of you saw my Wonder Woman coloring uh, example, I, I learned that a lot on there, that I could do these great kind of brush strokes, but I'm still trying to get my head around remembering everything with this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the white here for the cape. Now this is the inner part of the cape that's sort of behind her and it's all gonna be in shadow. So we're just gonna drag and do the whole area. Ain't that cool. But if we do that one, I want a little bit of white. We're gonna, oh. I thought I, thought I did the selection. So that we're not going out there. Looking good. Same thing here, we're gonna drag that completely in. And then just do under her arm. Too much. Still working on sort of smooth lines with this. I'm hoping that's something that I have come just with practice. Part of the reason I work sort of big. That's way too much. Uh, if I didn't say, the program that I'm using is called Procreate. Um, it's available on, well, on the iPad for sure, because that's what I'm using, but it's also um, probably available on Android. 
Um, it's, I've seen a lot of people using this. Um, it was the reason I bought an Apple Pencil, and quite frankly, I've had my Apple Pencil for about six months, and until last week, I wasn't sure I had made the right decision in buying it, but I really liked a couple of pieces that I did in the last week or so. Uh, there's a the clock again. That means it's been 15 minutes. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a new layer, and we're gonna name that highlights and the same thing we did with the shade la layer we're gonna make this 40% and again these are just numbers that I figured out work and I've only been doing this for about a week so I might figure out down the line that these that there's better numbers for this but for right now we're gonna do 40% and then we're gonna go now the nice thing with this color wheel and everything is I've got a Megan palette here okay so like that's straight black, that's straight white, that's the red of her costume, the yellow of her costume, the white of her costume, her flesh tone, her hair tone, her eye color, her freckle color, her blush color, and then this is some other colors for her uh, sort of civilian costume that we that I haven't revealed yet. So <clears throat> whenever I need one of these colors, I can come right here and get it. So, but we're gonna just go white, okay? And then we're gonna pick the hair level. And we're going to do some highlights in her hair. See, I made the brush a little too big. <clears throat> and, you know, never get married to the, to the line you just drew. You can always do a better line, so that's not a problem. But it did go down more than I wanted it to, so we have to come... Okay, so there's that, and then we're gonna do one. Oh, it's terrible. Now, we're gonna do the highlights the whole same way, right? But I want to show you one more trick because I don't know how much longer I'm going to keep recording if, I, if you guys want to see me do the whole thing or not. But we're going to do one more trick. We're going to do another layer. I'm going to call this one highlights. But be real creative and we'll call it highlights two. And on this one, I make it 60%. And this does two things. Okay, we're on that layer now. Now we're gonna go. This is the brightest parts of her hair. And the other thing with this layer is, I use this layer over her yellows more because the regular highlight over yellows and over certain brown, um, certain lighter colors, I should say, doesn't quite do enough. Now, just to show you what we did there, let's turn off the one highlight layer. And you'll see it's still transparent, but because it's transparent over the other one, it's even wider. So if I use this layer on um, on yellow, on, on uh, anything metallic on her, on her eyes, it gives us a more bright um, highlight.
We'll do the same thing down there. Get a little smaller brush. Oh, that one went, went easy. Okay, so we'll go back to our first highlight layer. And I'm just using white on both. The opacity is set for both, so I don't have to make any adjustments. It, it just goes. So like, for example, we're gonna do, I'll turn the mask off, we're gonna do that for her for her eye color for sort of a highlight but then we're going to go and then we've got sort of a gradient i think i want that a little bit smaller yeah that's good And when you shrink it down to screen size, you get, you know, you get the tapering and the gradient. And like I said, it's still somewhat of a flat coloring style that I'm using, but I think it's working pretty good. Round that out more. So I'm just gonna go through and finish highlighting. I'll keep recording for now. Someone in the house is talking to Alexa. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear her in the background. Oh, I see I didn't have a mask on, so it's coming over into the blue. Another thing I'll do sometimes is I'll, I'll just let that happen, and then when I'm done, I'll pick the outside area on that layer and just erase everything that is there, and that's an easy way to do a cleanup on it. Now, you're probably saying... I thought Megan had freckles. Well, she does. I've stopped drawing her freckles because then you get these big black lines circling the freckles. What, I'm, what I've started to do is just paint the freckles on in Procreate. Which actually, um, the line art for this strip is so weird because it was the first one I did with how I work in Procreate in mind. So I left out the lines for these for these hair highlights. I left out the lines for the reflection on her eyes, reflection on her lip, the reflection on her earrings, the uh, freckles, everything. So. What I've started doing is I have, oh, I didn't make it yet. Um, so we're gonna make a new layer. And see, there's my flats. That's where all the basic color, color is. And we're gonna make this freckles. Now I could do this straight on the flat um, layer, but the reason I don't is because in case I have to change her skin tone or something, then I don't have to redo the freckles. But we got, this is her freckle color. And that looks pretty good. This one's a little big, but that looks pretty good right off the gate. Now see, I can erase that freckle and it leaves the skin tone underneath.
All right, there we go. Um, and now the reason we're going to put the layer where it is, which is just above the flats, beneath the shades, beneath the highlights, is because now if we come to, let's come to the highlight one, and we put a highlight on our face. Oh, wrong color. Got to go back to the white. We put a highlight on her face. It's going to affect the the freckle, and later I'm going to add blush to her, and it'll it'll be the same. The same effect where. Where the blush and the. Freckles are both affected by. The shadow and the highlights. Sorry, the hardest thing about doing these videos is when I start working, I kind of get in the zone and <laughs> space out on what I was talking about. But and because I'm working in the still shaded style, I could go more more white on the highlights. I could go more dark on the shadows if I really wanted to. I've actually been really paying attention to a lot of. Uh, animation lately that I generally watch anyway and seeing how they do it and it's sort of funny like I was watching uh, Avengers or Smiley's Heroes and they use this three tone and uh, Harley Quinn the new Harley Quinn show on DC besides being a great show it's got it's a great example of this you can see how they did the like two or three different, you know, a main color and a dark color and a light color and then a, 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 another highlight color if it's something that's metallic or whatever like I'm doing here, you know. But there's some shows, I can't think of what it was off the top of my head that I watched where it was like, oh, they're only doing two. They're doing a shade and a, and a base. They're not adding any highlights and they're not doing any darker shades. It's one set of shades. Oh, and then, so that's the point of all this. So let's go back to the shades. If this was... Megan in a darker um, location, we could always increase the shadow and see what that's done is shown me the spots that we missed. That's a good. Uh, that's a good trick to increase it and see where, where I've missed. I said 10 is just where I've found that I'm comfortable. And that's for basic lighting. Um, back to highlights. And then we gotta make sure we change back to the white. And we're gonna do. Now, here we're gonna do a highlight on our skin, but we won't go through to the sleeve because it's gonna be the reflectiveness of her of her skin, not so much the, you know, there's no real reflectiveness to her costume. Now we can do that, but it's gonna be It's not going to be as, as a big piece across her 
both across the three areas like it was with the... Uh... Oh, that's the hour one. I apologize. It's going to ring for a bit. Not a lot else I need to do. I guess I'll put a little bit on the yellow. Put a highlight in the shadow there. My uh, college fundamentals teacher, Mr. Kinney, would not be happy with me. Um, let's put some shade in her actual eye. Now, see, at this point, though, try to do everything at once. So, lay out everything, you know. But sometimes you realize you didn't do something. So, I'm going to go back and put a little bit of shade in her eyeball. And it's, of course, too much. Oh, that's... There we go. And maybe a tad there. Same thing. Just for some texture. Oh, we didn't really do anything on our eyebrows either, so... because it's a comic strip we can add a little bit of a highlight in our eyebrow now real quick we'll just go back to the second highlight layer And I do that over yellow areas just because it heightens it, whether it's metallic or not. Um, I guess I could do a little bit on her cape. Yeah, it's not going to be very visible. because of the white. Um, that's okay. Now, if I did it over the shadow, you would see it. What am I missing? Um, we can go to highlight two, and we can... on the earring. So, now we're going to do... Another layer. We're going to put this above the flats. Well, it'll drag above the flats, but below the freckles. And this is a 
blush. Now I've got my pink color I use for her blush. And what I do here, there's a couple of ways I do this. I do, um, do your brush. And we can try just airbrushing it in. It might not have been pink enough. So let's turn the blush layer, layer off. There's with it. Or there's without it. There's with it. And it's not actually that bad. The other way I've found that I like to do this is we'll make an ellipse selection. Ellipse selection and kind of cover the area that we need it in. And then I tell it to feather. And then I can go back with my ink pen. And you can see it fades out around the edges. I think I like this way better. So we're gonna go the eraser. And we'll go back to the airbrush. And we'll throw a mask down just so we don't hit any of her lips or her eyes or any of that stuff, I and mean, we can do that. We can go back in and fix it later, but and then we'll and I like to pick it up her nose. Let's turn that off. Let's turn that off and we'll do a little bit, just a little bit near here. Now this is the, the airbrush tool. So if I like press, you see it's gonna get thicker. And I think that's it. And there she is, panel four of strip four. Um, dialogue has not been added because I didn't want to give away the joke of what we're doing here, but I think she looks pretty darn good. Make sure the black layer is on, everything is on. I'm still going to play with the curvy dots in the background, I think, but I like it. Now, real quick, I'll show you. I may play with the curvy dots in the background. That means I have to take care, take out the um, the background color. So we're gonna select that background color. And since I've been using this sky, sort of sky blue a lot, we're gonna add it to my Megan palette. And we'll put it down there. And now I can come back to it if I need to. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. If you don't mind listening to me talk for this long, and that's my sort of process. And Still getting the hang of the pencil and everything, but um, we, uh, hey, we figured out a new way to do the blush right here on the video, and we liked it. And I'm probably going to take those highlights out of her eyebrows because they look weird to me. Um, let's see, that's the, the whole thing is going back to the right pen. All right, so look for the next strip on the 29th and hopefully some cool pinup between now and then. All right, talk to you soon.